Okay, so we are back with our RPG course tutorials, and uh, so far this is what we got. This is our game in here, obviously we got these debugging values in here, and last episode we built a cursor lock state. So now we can walk wherever we are pointing at, which is super good. So now in this video we are going to attempt to bring a NPC character in our game, as we can see in here. So, if you're new to my YouTube channel, you know that all of my characters come from MixAmmo.com. So this is MixAmmo, and uh, you can choose any of these characters you want. Maybe you want this mutant in here, and then you can go to Animations, type in NPC, and you should get these packs of NPCs. So you can just click this NPC right here, and you should get the whole entire pack of animations so this base should basically cover any of your needs for animations so just go ahead and download that and bring it to your game and that is exactly what i've done in here i have this goblin and for now this goblin does nothing so as we can see in here if we play our game he is basically doing nothing so that is exactly what we're going to try to do in this video we are going to try and make a npc that has a health bar in here so in the next video that we do we can introduce a damage system or a combat system and then later on we can kill this guy okay so let's get on with the video so this is my hierarchy and all i have in here is a game object that is in the position zero zero and then inside it i have this npc character so you might know how a npc character works or any character works you need a animator actually it would be a better idea if i just do this prefab unpack so now like we did in here we need an animator to put in here so we're going to search for animator and then you might have guessed what we need in here we need a controller to control our npc so i highly suggest you keep your stuff as organized as you can have it and go to your one of your folders create another folder call it animations and that is what i have in here so inside the animations create a animation controller so just call it like npc controller and drag this and drop it inside your controller so now you have a npc controller and to make sure that your npc controller is actually working go ahead and bring this animator tab in here so this is located in window animations and here it is so i'll drag this in for now and this is what you should start with you should start with all these three states so this is our main focus the entry we don't really care about these two so we can move them out of our reach so this is our entry and if you've been around my channel for a little bit you already know what we're going to do in here we are going to create a blend tree so what a blend tree is, I have already explained it, it helps us map our input. So here is our parameters. So even though this character is actually a NPC, it is still going to have a vertical and it's still going to have a float horizontal. So he can actually move around, roam around the world. So that is all we need for now. Now let's open this blend tree. The way you open it is by just simply double clicking it and here is our blend tree and in order to mess with the blend tree we need this an inspector view so we're going to change the blend type from 1d free form directional and here is our vertical and instead of blend we're going to send to horizontal okay now we have this motion field in here so we're just going to add some motions in here add like a couple of motions for now and these are adding as dots into this image right here so before we go ahead and drag and drop our animations like this for example we want to make sure that they actually work so we're going to click one of these animations and we're going to click play so for now this is telling us that no model is available for preview and we are going to fix that by taking this character of ours so all we're going to do is drag him and drop him inside in here. So now we have a idle character, as we can see in here. So from past experience, we want our idle to be motion where we have no input from 
our keyboard or in this case the npc so we're going to drag this and drop it inside here so now if we click play and even if we mess around with the horizontal or vertical he should not be tails okay so we're going to leave this back to zero and now what do we want to do well we want this character to start walking so in order to make him walk we want our horizontal so if our horizontal is one that means this position has to be one right here so now we have a motion that is empty so we want to look for walking in here and as we can see we have two walking animations we have this one which looks cool by the way and we have this one okay so as long as we're building a npc that is a monster which is not a human if i can say so like that i don't recommend spending a lot of time with these animations so let's just drag our walking dropping inside in here and now we're gonna have that problem that i have explained in the previous episodes that if we try and walk forward he's gonna walk but he is going to return at this place after he walks like one step so the way we're gonna fix that it is by going into our animation animation tab and loop pose so after doing that go back to your plant tree and now you can mess around with the vertical and he should walk in place so that is what we want okay now for now i'll just delete these animations and i'll just leave him with walking animations okay so for now let's just try and play the game and see if he is actually idling okay so we have a slight problem that our anim actually ends instead of just going in loops and that is easily fixed by doing th the same thing that we did just a moment ago so go to zombie idle and make sure that loop is set so now if we go ahead and play it we should see our character actually looping so as we can see in here after this is done as a blend tree it should return back and play over and over so we can go ahead and look at our player and he's actually idling okay so now let's make a very very simple health bar that appears on top of him and that is quite easy so we're gonna go at our character click ui and we need a slider so by default this ui will create this huge plane and that is obviously not what we want so we want this canvas right here to be in world space so when we do that we should be able to scale this so we're gonna reset this back to zero and as we can see now we have a very massive health bar so we're gonna decrease the width like 10 height 10 as well and now i'll just delete the canvas and i'll create one more slider okay so for this slider what do we need well first we need him to we need it to be not interactable so we're going to change it only via script and we don't need a handle area so we're going to make it just a little bit smaller like 10 and since this slider is kind of blurry we're going to change this pixel size to maybe like 20 so now it's slightly better and i'm just going to scale this down so now we have a health bar okay so we have a very simple health bar in here and obviously we don't want to look from behind because that health bar will become a flipped so as we can see now if we hit play we're going to see that the health bar is appearing differently from this side over to this side and that is not what we want so a very simple fix for that is by going to this canvas and adding a look at constraint so I'll just delete it for now and I'll add it back so look at constraint and into that look at constraint we want to add a source and the source is obviously the main camera so you can just hit that is active button and there we go now we have that and now we have this health bar just looking at us all the time okay so that is the fundamentals that we're going to be building in the next videos we have our mob in here or should i say our npc and all we're going to do in the next video is introduce a health system and then we can later on we can damage him so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next videos